And I wanted to make a video for you guys breaking down the trades that I took last week. So by the end of the week, I'd managed to collect two wins and I missed one trade. Fortunately, I totally avoided taking a lot, which is always a nice thing to achieve. And in this video, I want to break down the two winners and the miss for you to show you the thought processes behind the trades that I take. Just before we get into the video, I wanted to introduce you to my free course. This is a 70 minute training which is designed to turn your trading around and show you why you're not winning and how you can start creating positive results within your trading. I've had nothing but good reviews on this free training so far and it's helped a lot of people on their journey. So make sure you check it out and now let's get to the charts. Trade number one was a setup revolving around liquidity. Oftentimes on the markets I trade the Asia range moves sideways and what this actually does is collect liquidity either side of the market which is then generally swept out when we move into the next session being London. So this setup was actually taken early in the morning after we'd formed the full range for the day. We actually had a sweep above the Asia range and then I was looking for structure to then break back to the downside. So at this point I was using these lower time frames, and what we can see here is that we had a bullish trend coming out of the Asia range and we have this higher high, higher low, higher high. So at this point I was looking for a breaker structure like this to pull us back down and this would obviously confer with the high time frame bias as well because I did have a high time frame idea that this was likely to make some form of pullback before continuing any higher. So for this setup to form I was looking for a breaker structure here like this, a pullback and then a sell. And this is exactly what I wanted to see. Now, shortly after formulating the idea and sending it out to my team, that is exactly what happened. We got the break of structure, which was really good to see. And now I was actually using the low time frame, very low time frame, in fact, being the 30 second to mark my supply zone. So all of my entries, if you've been watching me for a while, are basically formulated from imbalanced supply or demand. It's always going to be one of the two. In this instance, I was looking for a break of the structure to then lead us into an imbalanced supply. And the most clear and balanced supply for my position here was on the 30 second time frame. So my entry was just there, my stop was just above, and then my target was down into the Asia low. So this setup was around 3.4R, uh, if it obviously triggered in and ran all the way to the target, which in the end, as you will see, it did quite nicely. So now I just placed the order and then I just left that to play out and do its thing. And over the day, it did actually go through, trigger my entry and then move towards the target. So as you can see here, took a little bit into London session for this to actually be triggered uh, but I didn't FOMO I didn't panic sell because I knew that we were probably likely to come and fill that 30 second so we hit that and then when we sold off it was a pretty fast run straight down to the take profit and that was the first win of the week the first trade of the week and that was 3.4 R here on Euro USD the second setup I took this week which was also a win was this one on GBP USD first trade was on Monday second trade I found on Tuesday but it didn't execute until the next day so this trade, I was looking for a buy on GU. Now, if we look at the zoomed out picture, basically for GBPUSD, I was looking for price to take out these highs because on the higher time frames we have this imbalanced supply zone here. So I was looking for these highs to be taken out and for price to trade into this area. Now, keep that in mind for the week ahead because I'm still looking for that to be filled. But unfortunately, my target did not get filled this day, but my TP did get hit because I decided to get out of the trade early and scale it out at this clear supply. So my profit was actually taken in the end at this supply zone just here. And if we break down the price action from this point onwards, we can see we have demand around this level, price traded into that. This actually aligns with a really nice low time frame demand zone, which I'll show you in a moment. Um, so if we go back down to the five minute, scale it back to previous price over here, we can see that this supply zone just here did actually have some imbalance leading into it. And that's a very big factor for me when I'm looking at my trades. Now, any small amount of imbalance can actually be seen as an area that price is going to be sweeping through. So this is the entry area that we saw price react from perfectly. And this is why I say always consider imbalances, even the very smallest of them, because price did actually manage to push through trade into that demand before moving away. So after seeing this demand zone reaction, we'd also then seen a break of structure, which was just here. OK, so we had lower low, lower high, lower low. You could also classify this as your break structure if you wanted to. This may have actually been the level I had marked due to what I just mentioned to you. So lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, consolidation. Then we push down, sweep out. Then we push up, break this structure, kind of meaningless to me because it's a liquidity range. Then this breaker structure here really confirms that we are ready to move away in the other direction. So at this point, I was looking for a setup to trade higher. Now, as mentioned in the end, I did take my profits early at this supply, which was a good move to make. Uh, and this trade was using demand here. So what we can see once again, my entries are always taken from imbalanced demand zones, okay, uh, or imbalanced supply zones. 
And here is imbalance, demand. This is the demand that's really kicked this impulse into the market. So this is a high interest area for me to buy from. So then buys came in from around this area. Stop losses just beneath this zone and then targets leading us through towards around this area. And that was the position that I went with. Now, this one, obviously, when I play it forward, is going to take a while. We consolidated for a very long time due to session timing. This was New York session, you can see, moving into the evening. So pairs like GBP USD, Euro USD, and you know, London and New York focused pairs I trade are going to move slowly. So it did consolidate for quite some time. But after the Asia session, it did actually run down, hit my uh, trigger point, and then nearly hit the stop, but didn't quite hit the stop, and then ran all the way upwards towards that target. So this was a fast win and a very healthy win as well. This was a really nice trade for around 7R. Uh, I did take some early, so in the end, I got about 4.5 out of the full move. If I'd have held it all, that would have been fine. But I was just considering the possibility of us pulling lower down, decided let's lock some in. 4.5 for a trade is really nice anyway. So that was my position on GBP USD. And now this continued bias leads into the missed opportunity that I took on GU, which did hurt. So I will show you that one now as well. But that is the GBP USD win. Very simple structure following system here. We looked for demand retest. We followed the breakage structure. We found imbalance leading into supply up here. And then we decided to buy from demand and close out that position for a profit once we'd hit that supply zone up here. So that was that trade. The next trade was prepped for Thursday. And as you can see here, we continued with the price action a little bit, traded upwards. Then we pushed up to this point, kind of liquidation over this range, broke back down, taken out the low of this range. And now I was looking for the potential for price to pull lower. So the target I had for this trade was going to be this imbalanced demand here. Even though I was expecting price to come all the way to this level, I anticipated that a reaction from here could occur and push us higher before we pull down to this level. So the setup I prepped was basically looking for a sell from supply here, following this break of structure here after the liquidation that we saw here. And now I was simply going to be looking for a sell from this supply to then bring us down towards this target. Now I could have gone with a risk entry. Had I done that, I would have won this trade. Unfortunately, I decided to be a little bit pickier and went for a confirmation style entry, which is what actually led to me missing the movement. So as you'll see price play out, we came up and traded into this supply. Now my prepped risk entry, which is why this trade hurts so much, was a sell here with a stop above these wicks and then a target down into that level. That was the trade that I was going to go for, but in the end, I opted to go for the confirmation approach. And the confirmation has actually formed now, right? Because we've pushed up, traded into supply. Now we've came down and we have now broken this structure just at this level here. So at this point, I was looking for the one minute supply and I used this area here, this blue candle, last candle before the impulse. And I decided to put a sell limit on this level, stop loss above this high, target down towards this supply and unfortunately price decided as you will see in one moment to form some equal highs here which led me to believe they were going to get swept and then just sell off without me and by the time i had looked for a new position i was too late and as you will see we pinpointed the take profit level and then moved away in the other direction so i did miss this move and it was upsetting to miss because it would have been the biggest one of the week really it was around 9r on the position that i prepped but Nevertheless, we still won the nice 3.4R on EURUSD and just over 4.5 on GBPUSD earlier in the week as well. So overall, it was a successful week of trading, even though I missed this position, which would have been caught if I went with the risk entry. I'm not too mad at myself. Uh, going for a confirmation style entry here is not bad at all, considering we are basing the trade off of the liquidity uh, and not so much off of the market structure concept on the higher timeframes, only following this intraday structure. So my personal opinion is going with the confirmation style entry here is not too bad at all. Good way to mitigate the risk and keep it down. And unfortunately for this example, I just missed out on the trade and got unlucky. But those were the three major trades for the week. And that is pretty much all I was looking at in the past week. Happy to have finished up January with two wins and a miss. No losses included this week, which was really good. Had a really good start to the year. And of course, I did send all these trades to my team as well. So everybody is winning. I hope this breakdown has brought some value to you and I hope you found it beneficial to see the thought processes I have behind the trades that I take. If you want to learn these systems in more depth, head over to the link in the description and join my trading academy. You'll get 30 hours of video teaching you how I trade and you'll also be able to join us in the community and trade live with us every single day. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future educational and analysis videos. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. If you've enjoyed this analysis video, make sure to check out this educational video as well, because this is going to open your eyes to some new topics on how to trade the market successfully.